Hi, this is John Zombro with the Lifetime Athlete, and thank you for joining me in this video today. It's going to be a quick one because, of course, we're talking about speed. And what I'm going to be describing is a comparison between surfing and sprinting. And I think you'll find this interesting. So first of all, when we think about sprinting and linear speed development, unless you have a track and field background, uh, you may not have too much experience in this, but for every team sport, court and field applications, developing maximum velocity can be helpful in performance and it also has a protective benefit for the hamstrings when, when applied properly. Also, for every fitness enthusiast and person who's interested in staying in shape for life and maintaining the highest levels of functionality and performance abilities, developing and nurturing and maintaining your speed through the lifespan is a critical capacity. Okay, so let's get right into what we're talking about here. Mainly we're talking about when you're running a 40-yard dash on grass or 100 meters on the track. And again, this is something that everyone who can should be doing a little of. <clears throat> well, there are different phases. And of course, we initially have um, a start phase. And so we come out of a start position. And so if I was to describe this, what a surfer might do, the surfer's going to catch the wave, so they're going to accelerate and paddle up to get on that cresting wave. The sprinter is going to drive out from a start position. So this could be a three-point or four-point uh, start out of blocks and accelerate. So this is our drive phase, and we're maintaining those lower body angles, possibly 45 degrees coming out like that. The first step is a big push. The second is just a little less big and the third's a little less big than that and then we start to see the mechanics uh, quicken up a bit and that's what we're doing. Well that's called getting out. We need to get out from the start to initiate our sprint and this is a cue that I'll sometimes use with athletes. I've been sprinting myself, maybe not with great distinction, for 45 years and working with people in this capacity for greater than 35. And so a lot of times I'll just use that idea, hey, let's make sure you get out from your start. Sometimes I might shout it at them as they're performing, but I don't always do that. Sometimes you're better just giving a person something to think about, keep in their mind and not even distract them. But we're going to get out. Now the next thing that happens, when the surfer is going to uh, go through his or her process, they're going to get up. And so they're going to pop up and get into their stance on the board. It's slightly different for a sprinter because we're going to see a rise, and we want that rise to be gradual into upright, excuse me, upright running mechanics. So instead of being in an acceleration mechanics where we're doing uh, some different things with uh, the uh, position of the foot and the orientation or angulation of the body, uh, ground contact time, things like that. Well, now we're going to rise, but we want that to be gradual as we get into those upright running mechanics. I'm going to talk about those in just a second. So this is essentially getting up. Now, what I usually don't do is I don't yell, get up at a person when they're running, because sometimes that can create an instantaneous response or reaction. And what we're trying to do is make that transition be gradual and smooth. Remember, smooth is fast and fast is smooth. So that's where we go from getting out to getting up. And now we get on our gear. And so for the server, that's um, getting on the board, riding the wave, coming down over the top and doing what surfers do. For runners, there's actually a sweet spot, a biomechanic a place where your legs are gonna be cycling and switching. And a lot of the words that will describe how the foot is attacking the ground, such as brisk, crisp, snappy, poppy. We want all those things. We want actually high ground reaction force because we wanna strike hard, that's one of the uh, determinants of fast runners is they are able to strike the ground hard and also we want ground contact times or GCTs to be minimized or as brief as possible so swiftly quick and hard is what's happening with this and as far as being on top of your gear there's a position where 
Yes, you're upright, but you're slightly, ever so slightly flexed because if we totally straighten everything out, you end up decelerating and losing your speed. So we want to be uh, just a little bit, I don't want to say squatted, but a little bit flexed. And also kind of angling forward by a few degrees as though you were a timber cut from the ankles and, and falling forward. There's a point where you're going to maintain that free speed, that momentum. And so the energy that you put into the system is additive and you're not... Uh, decelerating with every <clears throat> stride. So those are some ideas for you guys just to think about as you're embracing and loving your speed training and sprinting and think about getting out, getting up, and getting on. Thanks for joining me today and if you'd like more resources just check them out at thelifetimeathlete.com.